Joining us now is Patricia Duke from Love Inc., uh, an organization that does great things in, in this community. Um, Patricia, give us, uh, in a nutshell, a little history of Love Inc. Yep, so um, we are Love in the Name of Christ of North Oakland County. We have been around locally since 2007. Um, nationally, we've been around for 42 years. Wow. And as I said, our mission is to, to help um, mobilize churches to help folks who are in need and sort of get them out of where they are and show them a different way. So in a way, you kind of help network uh, local churches and things like that to sort of work together and support those in need? Absolutely, yes. Yeah, yeah that's great. So how do you do this? How, where does the funding come from? Um, so we are strictly funded by donations, so from all of our local partner churches and from folks in the community. So you have one coming up uh, soon, uh, Wojo's. Talk yes. about that. Yep, um, they're very generous. They do um, many fundraisers for lots of organizations throughout the year, and they are doing um, two of them for us, May 26th and um, June 4th. So if you go to shop at Wojo's, just tell them that you're there to support Love, Inc., and 10% of your purchases go back towards us. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah. That's great. So you also have a clothes closet and you're gonna be uh, announcing a new location. What's yes. the closed closet all, all about? How can someone access that service? Yeah, so when we have folks um, who call us and they might you know, have a need, financial or otherwise, we um, set them up with our ministries. So um, if they wanna shop at our closed closet, they you know, don't have to shop for themselves and spend that money there. They can use it for some of the bills that they need to pay. And so we also have them um, shop at our Bed Blessings and Beyond Ministry. But um, what we had to do was we had to um, pause the closed closet at St. Mary's in the Hills, and we're very excited to be opening it at Oxford Free Methodist Church in August. Oh, that's we're Very fantastic. excited, yes. That's great, and so how do you keep the closed closet stocked? Donations from the community. So everyone in Oxford, Lake Orion, everyone has been generous over many years, and um, that's what we do. We do clothing drives and also drives for our bed blessings and beyond for household goods as well. So lots of community support. That's what keeps us going. Any age, Patricia, with clothes that you particularly need? Every single age. So we're going to be completely restocking the shelves at the, at the new location. So we're going to be starting completely fresh. So we do infant up until adult. Oh, wow. Yeah. So the clothing drive, do you announce certain dates? Uh, how does that work? Yep, so um, we're planning on doing it um, right now tentatively in July to stock the closet in August. And so we're going to be doing things on a weekly basis, so more to come with that. We'll be sending out some stuff in um, the end of June to let folks know what we're going to be looking for to stock that closet. Is uh, that new location that you just mentioned in Oxford, is that the drop-off point? Where can people drop off clothing items? Yep, we're going to have it all. In, like, it'll be a one-stop shop, so it'll all be at Oxford Free Methodist Church. We just have to figure out the logistics because it's brand new for them and for us at that location. But it'll be a drop-off, and that's where the closet will be located. That's fantastic. Yeah. Uh, now I see here it says uh, you're announcing a transformational ministry class. What's that about? Yep, so we're very excited about that because we've always said that we don't want to just just give folks a hand up we want or a hand out we want to give them a hand up and so this will be um, a financial literacy class that we're starting wow. yeah, with the target date in September and it's all about us moving more into relationships with folks so that we can move alongside them to show them a different way so they can be more self-sustaining you know that's great because I was just talking to someone recently that in high school I didn't I don't feel like I was adequately prepared mm -hmm. to do my own taxes yep. and stuff yep. like that. Are, is that the type of thing that you might touch on? Absolutely. That. So we're planning on doing probably a first six-week class and then a second six-week class. So we'll do some of the basics, you know, with banking and budgeting and then, you know, setting stuff up, maybe a checking and a savings account. But we certainly plan to move on to other things like taxes and investments, but that'll be further down the road. Yeah, that's fantastic. Yeah, that's we're very excited service. about it because then we'll really be able to you know meet with our folks where they are and what we're also going to be doing is we were doing our intakes when we found out about folks we were doing that over the phone and now we get to do that in person so we'll really oh, cool. you know get to like start that relationship with folks because it's mm -hmm. nice to be able to do over the phone but you really start to build and are able to mentor when you you know see folks face to face we're really excited about that that's great are yeah. you bringing in some speakers or maybe local businesses to help share that information um, um, that'll be, it's it's all in its infancy, so yeah, we yeah. would certainly love to have, you know, partners with businesses um, in the area. We are working with um, Capricor right now, Regina, 
um, in Lake Orion to help us figure out, you know, what those classes need to look like for that financial literacy. So we're excited about that. Yeah, yeah. that's great. Now, um, I vote in Oxford. I live right on the uh, border of Orion and Oxford. And my precinct is a little church over there in Oxford. You're familiar with that church, aren't you? I think you mean Lake Point Community That's Church. That's the one. <laughs> yeah, I vote there too. Uh, yes. And so your offices are there. They are. Uh, are you are. looking for new space? We are praying that God brings us a large building that we can house all of our ministries in. So we would love to have our clothes closet, our bed blessings and beyond ministry. Mm -hmm. And then since we're starting to see folks in person, you know, office space for that to happen. So wherever it's going to come from. We've, we've put it out there in the community, so we're just gonna wait and see when it happens. But we are so grateful for Lake Point Community Church for housing our offices there, because we couldn't do it without them. Yeah, do you uh, have any leads at all uh, yet, or maybe, uh, maybe. someone <laughs> watching this show? Uh, She's might not giving it up yet. <laughs> if anyone would be willing to donate at least a minimum, and I said donate, please, as a tax write-off, $5,000, $5,000. Well, we would like that as well, but on um, 5000 square feet we could probably squeeze into that for sure All right. and it's a tax write-off it is that's what I mentioned yeah, yes, that's it's a bonus a tax, absolutely I just got to go back to Lake Point Church sure yes. they are so out outward focused what an incredible group of people there yeah. absolutely all the ministry work yes. that they do it's it's phenomenal it's phenomenal. So what is, what's the size of your staff and, and how, how many volunteers do you deal with? How, do, how is that structured? So um, right now we have myself, um, one other, two, two and a half other people. We actually have another position that we need to fill. So it's mm -hmm. myself, the director, our um, coordinator, our transformational ministry coordinator, and we are looking for a donor development coordinator. So mm -hmm. someone to help us raise money and build relationships with donors. So two and a three and a half, <laughs> we're always looking to grow. So we probably have about 40 volunteers. Oh wow. And so we couldn't do what we do without them for sure. What, what are your expectations of a volunteer? What time of time, or what kind of time commitment and, and what are their duties? So um, we have lots of different opportunities for volunteers. It could be as little as four hours a week. Um, we look for volunteers to answer the phones as receptionists. Um, we need volunteers who are intake workers who would sit for folks for about an hour to, to get their story. We have um, a need for folks in the clothes closet and bed blessings and beyond. That could be about three hours a week. We're going to need some mentors once our classes start and some folks who might be interested in teaching those financial classes. Mm -hmm. So lots of different opportunities. Just, you know, I like to sow those seeds and see whatever sounds good for the, the folks who hear about the opportunities. Great. I know over the, the past two years, this pandemic that hopefully we're emerging from uh, has mm -hmm. had a severe impact on fundraising efforts and local nonprofits. How were you impacted over the last two years by this pandemic? very significantly. Um, we get lots of our donations from um, the public and from churches, as I mentioned. We have, um, we're moving more, we're moving a little bit more away from fundraisers and kind of trying to ignite that passion in donors who really feel like, you know, what we do is great for the community. So that's what we're trying to focus on. But we've had a real severe impact on our donations through COVID. Did you find that your clients, what was, what was the people who needed your services uh, what did you witness during the pandemic? Was there more of a need for your services or did you hear from less people? Because at the fish food pantry, their calls actually went down for a little while before they started going back up again. Did you experience something similar? We experienced the exact same thing. We work really closely with fish and so we've sort of watched it go up and down and up and down. We were lucky enough to receive a grant from the United Way um, to help clients, but we ended up having to spend that all in a certain amount of time. So all that, that money for clients is gone. So we're looking wow. to um, segue into the next thing, and that's <laughs> the need for monthly donors. That's right. Because that really, I mean, that makes a difference for us, being able to engage those folks who feel passionate about what we do. And, um, you know, giving back financially is one of those ways that we ask folks to contribute if, if they feel the passion for what we do. How can people find out more information about this? Um, so loveincofnoc.org okay. or call us at 248-693-4357. Good. So are you looking for businesses to donate, individuals, are there tiers? 
We're looking for everyone to donate to their capacity. Whatever, any, you know, we're looking for donors who would be um, even able to, you know, donate ten dollars a month because mm -hmm. any any difference, you know, it makes a big difference. It'd be cool if those kids in their classrooms would participate. If a teacher would think this is a great way for us to mm -hmm. have our kids engage in something, they could easily do a five dollar or a ten dollar a month as a whole. Absolutely. You know, a bunch of 30 or 30 <laughs> first graders or something. That yeah, would be maybe a neat bottle incentive. Bottle drive, coin yes. drive, something like Absolutely. that. Absolutely. I think yeah. those are great Engage ideas. Engage everybody. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Now, do you also provide meals to those who, who are in need? So we, um, it's under the umbrella of Love, Inc. We were able to bring that to the community and let them know that there was a need for folks to get together and have meals. And so we partner with um, four different churches, like Orient United Methodist Church does a meal on Monday. Um, Emmanuel Congregational Church in Oxford does a Tuesday meal. Uh, Lake Point Community Church does a Thursday meal. And then Oxford United Methodist Church does a Saturday morning meal. That's beautiful. Yeah. Do you have to meet any requirements to take part in these meals, or what's what's asked of you when you arrive? Just to come hungry. <laughs> Just to come hungry. And, and what's kind of nice, you know, we have our volunteers going out to talk to people, and we're starting to re-engage our um, pastors and, you know, meeting with folks and just talking to them and seeing how they are just being, you know, part of the community and inviting them in. That's fantastic. So yeah. even if you're just looking for companionship, you can come. It's not based on a need for income or food insecurities. It's just yep. anybody coming out. Yep, and that's that's the key there. It's the, the relationship building because that's what we want to do. Just, you know, meet folks where they are and, and help them move along their path. God bless those churches who are willing to do that once per week. What a gift. Yeah. It is a gift. Our partner churches are a tremendous gift, as are our volunteers and our employees mm -hmm. as well. Yeah. What can you say to people who are experiencing tough times mm -hmm. and are embarrassed or, or they find it difficult to ask for help? I actually love that you asked that question because I love when I speak to people, it's just, you know, we have all been through difficult times yeah. and we all have something to share and we all needed just that one person just to have that, you know, ear to listen to them and there's nothing to be embarrassed about because we have all experienced need in one way or another our entire lives, everybody. Sure, definitely. So we just, That's you know, true. we want to be an ear for folks. That's great. Sure. So as we wrap this segment up, once again, repeat how someone can get a hold of Love, Inc. Yep, so um, they can check us out at our website at um, loveincofnoc.org or call us 248-693-4357. All right. Once again, you're, you're doing fantastic work in the community. We appreciate it, and I'm sure the, the community appreciates it. Thank you. We love what we do. We love to help. Great. Thanks for coming. <laughs>